Hi there, Phil Pendlebury here. I've got Cubase 10.5 set up and in this video I'm going to go through my headphones workflow. So working with headphones is something that a lot of us are doing at the moment, especially since we're working from home. However, a lot of uh, the mixed people that are listening to this will have probably been using headphones most of their life in one way or another. I know that I certainly have. Before we do carry on, I just want to point out that this is not a definitive review of any of the plugins that I'm using here. It's just my workflow and how I like to do things and hopefully it might help a few people. So before we do carry on, just a quick explanation about why these things might be necessary. When you're listening to music through headphones, you're not hearing the same thing as you do through speakers. Um, quite simply, the, the signal from the left and the right channel is being pumped directly into your ears when you're using headphones. When you're listening on a pair of monitors, you're getting the ambience from the room itself and your left ear will be hearing some of the right channel and, and vice versa. Your right ear will be hearing some of the left channel. So mixes just tend to sound completely different. Now there's a lot of argument about which is right and which is wrong, but over the many, many years I've found I always use headphones to check my mix but I found that if I use it to actually do a finished mix, things just don't seem quite right. Sometimes the vocal won't be loud enough or the drums will be wrong, the guitars that are panned won't sound quite in the right places and so on and so forth. But recently, of course, we're having to do a lot of work in headphones. Um, so I've found a little workflow that uh, helps me and I hope it helps you too. So let's, uh, let's move into it. Basically, this involves a chain of plugins. Here's my little chain. Now, I've just got to point this out because this is something that comes up a lot. In fact, somebody's just questioned me about this today, is where do you put these kind of things? And I'm going to get back to this again later. But you can see this is my Cubase um, control room here on the right. This is my main outs. Now, 100% the headphone application plugins would be in the control room, never in the main outputs. The only reason I've got them here today is because I need to record them so that you guys can hear it. Otherwise, not there. They would be in the control room, which is after the main outputs and only audible on my headphones. And of course, the reason for that is these are effects that are enhancing the way that you hear things through the headphones, but they should not be applied to the final mix. Right, so let's move on. So the first plugin I'd like to talk about is Tone Boosters Morphit. Here it is. And the whole idea of this plugin is to try and flatten out and sort of smooth out the equalization and the phasing and you know other little interesting things of your particular headphones. What prompted me to go down this route was my favorite old HD265 Sennheisers. Um, the cable broke and I can't get a replacement cable right now. So I had to buy some new headphones. Would you believe where I am in the world, it's easier to buy new headphones than it is to get a replacement Sennheiser cable. Um, and they don't make those headphones anymore. I've been using that model for many, many, many years. So I ended up with a pair of uh, Bayer Dynamic DT880. And the first thing I noticed when I put these on was that very, a lot of top end and not much bottom end and a lot of kind of sizzly top end around 12K um, and not much of the bottom. So I, I thought, oh dear, you know, I'm going to have a little bit of a trouble with this, getting used to this. Um, and this is where Morphic comes in. So what this does, and incidentally, there are other plugins that do this job, but this is the one I settled on. Um, and I settled on it for a number of reasons. One is the price. Um, two is the fact that you can do a few other things that you can't do with the other plugins. But let's have a listen to this uh, little drum loop with Morphit bypassed. So that's Superior Drummer and it's just some drums that I programmed up for a, another track actually. Um, and 
what I'm going to do is turn Morphit on. Now what, what you do is basically you select your set of headphones and it will attempt to adjust the kind of equalization curve to make it flat as possible. So Now, hopefully, if you are listening to this with headphones on, especially, you will have heard a difference, and it would be good if you do have headphones on while you're listening to this video, I suppose. Especially when we get a little bit further along, it's going to make much more sense. Um, I notice as soon as I activate that, I notice that all that really sizzly top end around that area is, you know, goes away, and the bottom end raises up, which is exactly what I want. Now, there's an argument for saying that you get used to your the sound of your headphones, and I do agree with that, but in this particular case, I really needed a bit of EQ. So, aside from that, what I like to do is I'm, I'm simulating here, rather than just correcting this generic Harman curve, which I think sounds lovely, and I think it's quite a well-known thing. So you can do that, but uh, let's have a quick listen to that as it is. Or maybe a little bit of um, bit of music. So that's in simulation mode. Now, bearing in mind the other things here, you can do. I, I like to have mine customized a little bit, so I just drop the bottom end off a little bit there. Um, so if you had a pair of Sennheiser HD 600s, which, like I said, I would love to get, but I can't get them at the moment here. So you just select your model, and there you can see the curve has been adjusted to correct, or hopefully correct, the sound to make your particular headphones sound a bit flatter. So I'm going to just play a bit more of this music. Incidentally, I'm using all my own music here because I don't want to come across any copyright infringements or anything. Um, so I'm just going to play a bit of this. Like I said, it won't make much sense to you unless you happen to have the pair of headphones on that I do select. <laughs> Okay, so you get the idea. Like I said, the only way that this would really make sense would be for me to go through every single model and then for you to have your particular headphones on listening to that you know, particular model. But just let's point out that, as far as I can tell, it's pretty accurate and it really does help. Um, and the other features here as well, of course, is that you can... Let's, let's go back to the um, my particular headphones. You can choose how much of the curve you want to use and you can also simulate another pair of headphones or another curve. So if I wanted to know what my um, track is going to sound like to people that are listening with a pair of Apple EarPods, I can do that. Atlantic swell reflect. You get the idea. So that's Morphit. And once again, just to point out, that you might not need that because you might be so comfortable with the sound of your headphones that it's not necessary. Okay, so let's move on. So the next plugin in the chain, I'm going to leave Morphit off now because for the benefit of those of you that are listening with headphones or speakers, in fact, but like I said, ideally you'd be listening with headphones on. Um, you don't want to hear the colour of my particular headphones. So you'll just have to bear in mind that the EQ side is done by that plugin, Morphin. So the main thing that we would mention in earlier was this thing about your left signal and your right signal in the headphones themselves being pumped directly into your ears. And when you're listening to speakers, the whole sound is created differently. You're getting 
the, a little bit of right speaker in your left ear, you're getting the little left speaker in your right ear, you're getting ambience of the room and so on. So this is where can opener comes in. So when you're using can opener, you're getting cross feed and other things that are related to the sound of a pair of monitors. Um, and you can adjust the angle. So this one here would um, move the perceived speakers further apart. The amount of cross feed, there's an EQ section there and then there's some other things as well. Um, there's three different settings depending on how much power and latency you wish to use. So if you're wearing headphones, let's have a listen and see if uh, you can tell. This one is really quite essential for me. So as you can see with the angle there, that's pulling the perceived monitors closer together and the further you move it, they're going further apart. The actual amount of cross feed is this one here and these are the two main controls. So let's have a quick listen and I'll have a play around with these and see what you think. So again, you get the idea, I think. Um, I find that really useful. It sounds subtle when you're playing with it like we are doing right now. But once you've got that in your chain, um, in your headphone chain over here, along with something like Morphit, I find it really invaluable. OK, so let's move on. I'm going to disable can opener right now. We'll have a little summary at the end as well when we've finished. So the next, uh, the next plugin is uh, the Waves NX and Abbey Road Studios. Now these both do a very similar thing um, and to, to can opener, but they do feature uh, a kind of real time head tracking and movement thing. Now, some people have said, oh, I don't like the sound of Abbey Road because it, it's too colored, but then it is supposed to be colored because it's supposed to sound like you're in Abbey Road Studio. That's that's the whole point. So there is ambience and there is EQ and, and there's three different sets of speakers there. You know, um, The actual basic NX is not coloured at all to me, uh, but you can choose the amount of room ambience. Anyway, let's have a quick listen. So once again, I'm keeping Morphit disabled. Obviously, there's no can opener going to be en enabled on this either because they both do the same thing, albeit in slightly different ways. Um, so first thing we need to do is make sure that the head tracking is working. Although it's not vital, you can do it manually uh, like this, but uh, I'm lucky I do have a, um, a little NX Bluetooth device fitted to my headphones. So we're going to go to that and just make sure that it's picked up, as you can see it is. And you can see that it's taking data as I move my head around. The important thing here is not to close this window. You just minimize it. And we'll select it. We'll enable it. And you can see the head there moving around as I move. You can see the head is pointing to the left. So what we need to do is make it point central as I'm actually pointing central. So we just hit the calibrate button and there you go. So now when I move my head to the left or right, the head moves along. So what we're going to do is just, again, I'll just play a bit more of, uh, of some actual music. Let's, uh, let's choose this one as a bit more of a rocky track. And then I will enable um, the NX and have a little play about. And bearing in mind, this might sound a bit odd because you're not moving your head. So you just have to imagine that you are. So let's play the track, then I'll enable the plugin.
And that really does sound like being in a room to me. Like I said, the the EQ side may be, you know, it's a little bit coloured, but it's supposed to be. It's supposed to sound like you sat in Abbey Road. Now, how close it is to the real thing, I really don't know. But for me, there's times when I have that enabled, especially when I have it in far mode like that. And I will be listening and turn my head and I'll think, oh, I've left my monitors switched on. And I've not only left them switched on, but I've left them switched on and they're really loud. And you take your headphones off and you suddenly realize, no, they're not. It is very clever how it works. And especially clever when you have the NX device fitted to your headphones. Okay, so let's have a little listen to the normal NX version. And as you can see with this, actually, if we listen to the drum loop, it's probably more appropriate. There's an ambience setting on this, so you can get rid of all ambience. And as you turn that up, you can hear that the ambience increases. Uh, I like to have it pretty much on nothing if I'm using it at all. Same thing applies, you set the sweet spot to keep your head central. Um, there's also one thing I forgot to mention which applies to both these plugins is uh, you need to measure your head. It doesn't take long, it might sound complicated but it really isn't. You just get a tape measure and you stretch it round and you take the two measurements that it requires um, and you enter them here. It really does make a big difference. Both of those also include a limited number of headphone um, adjustment kind of EQ, similar to what Morphit does, but to me they're nowhere near as accurate and they're not meant to be, It's you know, and also there's a very limited number. I think the only other thing is just to quickly mention the actual workflow involved here. First of all, a reminder, these plugins go on the headphone output. How you do that in your particular uh, door host, I don't know. But in Cubase, there is the control room section and you will insert them in the headphone output. You do not want to put them in the area that everybody else is going to hear. Um, and you don't want to put them in an area that's going to be included in the mix down. Unless, of course, you're using them for some kind of creative use. I suppose there would be a you know, a use for the Abbey Road thing if you were pretending that somebody was sat in a theatre moving their head around, I don't know. And the chain is simply this. Morph it to sort the EQ. Can opener to give you the impression of crossfeed. Either that or Abbey Road. So those are the three plugins that I have there. And it will be those two or those two, like that. Morphit will be on and can opener will be on and I just set them and forget about them and get on with the mix. Then when the mix is pretty much finished, I disable can opener, put Abbey Road on, move my head around, try some different speakers, have a little mess around with Morphit as well and try it with some custom, you know, with some uh, simulations of different headphones. So I'll imagine what people would, you know, be listening to if they were listening to my mix on a pair of AirPods, for example. And that's it, and I honestly have found really good results. Now, one thing I didn't do here was demo some spoken voice. Um, so let's just quickly do that uh, before we finish off. Okay, so I've pulled in just a little, um, a little voiceover clip here, and I'll just quickly uh, run through these plugins um, while that voice is playing um, because somebody was asking about the ambience and so on and understand that that's more obvious um, when you're listening in it you know with a, a dry sounding clip like like voice so here we go it's no easy feat to finish a 24-hour race to win is a dream to lose the win well that's the nightmare and this this is endurance racing it's no easy feat to finish a 24-hour race. To win is a dream. To lose the win, well, that's the nightmare. And this, this is endurance racing. It's no easy feat to finish a 24-hour race. To win is a dream. To lose the win, well, 
That's the nightmare. And this, this is endurance racing. It's no easy feat to finish a 24-hour race. So you get the idea there. As soon as I switched the Abbey Road on, you felt like you were hearing ambience from the room. But that is what it's meant to do. Uh, let's hear NX. To win is a dream. To lose the win, well, that's the nightmare. And this, this is endurance racing. It's no easy feat to finish a 24-hour race. To win is a dream. To lose the win, well, that's the nightmare. So you can see with, with the basic NX, although the EQ is not as warm and sweet as beautiful Abbey Road, it's much drier when you have the room ambience set to zero. As soon as you move the room ambience over, um, obviously you do start to hear these odd things which might not be desirable, especially if you're in post-production. It's no easy feat to finish a 24-hour race. To win is a dream. To lose the win, well, that's the nightmare. And this, this is endurance racing. But without any ambience on, I find that quite acceptable. To be honest, it's very similar. Um, again, you can move the speakers further apart and so on to try and match your own monitors. So there you go. That's it, really. Like I said, for me, morph it all the time. Can opener while I'm mixing because I don't want the mix jumping around while I'm moving my head, even though you don't necessarily have to have it moving around with um, the Abbey Road or NX. But that's just how I find it. I find that can opener is a little bit more transparent, let's say. And then when I'm finished, I will put Abbey Road on and have a nice listen, you know, to see how things are sounding when I move my head around or imagine that they were I was in another studio or so on. So anyway, there you go. I hope this has helped in some way or another. You know, maybe it has, maybe it hasn't. If anybody's got any questions, please do let me know. And once again, a quick reminder, this was not intended as a review of any of the plugins. They may be better, they may be worse out there, but these are the ones that I use because I like them and I spent quite a lot of time figuring out what I like and what I don't like. All right, let's play out. Thanks very much indeed, and I'll see you again another time.